All right, folks, I think we can get started. So uh, let me reintroduce myself. My name is uh, Derek Banga, and I am a general certified emotional intelligence coach. And uh, I want to welcome you all to this uh, amazing webinar that's going to be on the tools, techniques, and tips for being productive while working from home. I don't know how many people saw that article in the Business Daily on Friday that said up to 80% of Kenyans feel unproductive working from home. So these are some of the issues, some of the things that we're going to discuss about being a little bit more productive. Just a few housekeeping rules. We are obviously going to have uh, interaction with all of you. We have a chat box that you can use to pop in your questions, your feedback, your ideas. All of you are going to be on mute, but you can interact with, with us using that chat box function. I will be facilitating this session and helping me will be Vicky Karuga from Profiles International East Africa. So we'll collect all your comments and your questions. There may be even a poll or two that we we'll want you to participate in. Uh, we want to make sure that you get the most out of this. And so we'll also be able to provide you with a, a, um, a handout or a copy of this presentation uh, at some point once we are done for it. But now without any further ado, I'd like to introduce okay. our main speaker for the day. Uh, she is a business leader of renown. She is a leadership coach, and she's also uh, a general certified emotional intelligence coach. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Mukendia. Karibu sana. Take it away, Mary. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Am I muted? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Karibu sana. As Derek said, my name is uh, Mary Mukindia, and uh, I'm glad to be here today. Um, I, I'll be speaking on remote control tips and techniques for being productive while working from home. And um, it's my pleasure to be here as part of the uh, Genos team. Um, I, I guess um, as an oil industry and a corporate professional, I love acronyms. Sometimes there are too many when I go to the boardroom. Um, and I saw that this working from home, WFH, you'll see a lot of that. And it's an acronym or three letters that uh, refers to working from home. Uh, so you'll see this across in these presentations quite a bit. This webinar really focuses on practical things that we can do to maximize our own productivity when working from home. And we encourage your ideas, as Derek uh, said. And um, there will be a handout that will be sent to you on this webinar uh, in the email that will be, that will be sent to you. And we hope that that will be very useful, uh, will be very useful to you. I'm trying to work my computer. Just a little bit about who Genos is. Um, Genos is, uh, Genos International is a company that specializes in the assessment and development of uh, emotional intelligence. I was certified last year by Vicky as CEO for Profiles International. And there is this old at hand and an expert at this, and we are all learning. And it's a very nice, uh, tight, uh, smart community. Genos International was founded in uh, 2002 through Swindon University in Australia, and it works in 33 countries around the world. And in Kenya, it's represented by Profiles International, whose CEO Vicky is here assisting uh, Derek uh, facilitate. Um, for the third time running, Genos has actually been recognized by the training industry in the US as, as being among the top 20 global companies in the space. And we pride ourselves as Genos in supporting people develop their emotional intelligence, which they can apply both within the work contest and uh, context and also outside home. So emotional intelligence is actually a very powerful tool and we call it game changing for business and life in that it's about developing relationships. And we all know that leadership is about relationships. It's about influencing people and becoming more effective in what that we do. And I'll be talking a little bit more about emotional intelligence and why emotional intelligence is important within the context of uh, working from home, WFH, 
which we now find ourselves into. Um, Genos International, through uh, profiles, represents and trains and certifies e uh, emotional intelligence coaches here in Kenya. I do hope you enjoy this webinar. It's the fourth one. And more importantly, you, that you can gather some tips, you can gather some tools, and you can gather some techniques of being productive when working from home. Um, I'll be using some of my own experience. I'll also be using some of the things that we've learned in the last three uh, webinars that we've had, and we've had wonderful and uh, wonderful sharing. And I hope that you too, I encourage you to share in the chat um, so that we can all gain from all each other's experience. And uh, Vicky will be collating these chats and talking to us. And uh, I, I also hope that uh, Derek, and also there's another coach, um, Josephine Kimai, who I hope will also be part of, of this. You've been given the housekeeping rules by uh, Derek. Um, so let's all adhere to them. It's very um, hard when we mute you because even a small movement within your area actually affects everybody on the microphone and is picked up. So really to enhance these uh, presentations uh, and to maximize our learning uh, experience, we really um, do need to, to mute you. But please use the chat to communicate to us, to communicate to each other and share what your learning uh, experiences have been. So what I'm going to talk about, the agenda today we're talking about, we're going to examine the common challenges that are associated with working from home. Um, we will also, and there's so many challenges because we are managing children, we're managing staff, because in Africa we all live with our staff. I know many of you, like perhaps myself, uh, your staff, have not gone off, they're living now within your family. I have an 85 year old mother who needs care. And so I have two carers now who can't take off. I had to stop having all the nurses come in and the physio. And so we are all living in a new space and learning how to work with each other. In these spaces, we have a limited privacy. So there's no one size that fits all. And I hope that this webinar and through your sharing will all give us ideas that will work for you work for me and you can pick what you need to work on. We'll also explore a range of tools, uh, tips and techniques to overcome these challenges. Um, particularly those of you with children who are balancing two things now, perhaps even three because you're a wife mother. Um, and also review a technique to, to evaluate the impact of your strategies on yourself. And hopefully by the end of it all, what is a game plan? What is the action? What is a call to action? Is that we all have a personal plan on how we can uh, do it better. This is the model of emotional intelligence that we at Genos help people apply. And I hope that it will set some foundation for you of where we're going through. As I've said earlier, Genos, uh, Genos behavioral approach is a competency-based model, which you can see through here. And we help our clients to focus on the fundamental skills of self-awareness. Because when you work from home, the ability to be present to be in the moment so that you're in a more productive state is really critically important. And that's the whole objective of what we're trying to do. There are many distractions at home that make it difficult for us to function as productive leaders, which we would normally be in a quieter environment of the office. So it does require us to bring a certain amount of self-awareness in our work and then examine what tools and techniques are we using to evaluate the emotions that we're experiencing in this new world order where everything now is happening within the home environment. So self-awareness is one of the key things I'll be dwelling on this morning. Uh, because while working from home creates a lot of opportunities, it also creates a host of, of uh, disincentives. So the, we'll talk about the ability to connect with others. We'll also talk about um, the ability to be authentic and clear in our communication because this will be required. We also talk about the idea of how do you self-manage so that when we get frustrated, when things don't go according to plan, how do we self-manage our, our, ourselves so that we can be resilient, which is the topic of all these web series. We've talked about resilient East Africa challenge is to be self-managing so that we become resilient in the things that happen to us and we react with emotional intelligence. Um, and then the opportunity, we shall have to positively influence uh, countless others as we move on. Um, so the model here I'll be talking about will be the self-awareness. 
um, how, how can we be present in this self-awareness? Because we are working from the home. So it's important when we're working from home, it's important to be, you know, to build an understanding of the things that create a productive or um, a productive or a, a non-productive emotions for ourselves. So being self-aware about what are the things that trigger us to behave in an individual way. And during this webinar, we'll look at this. For example, I have realized that I'm triggered when people come to the door, uh, delivery, whatever it is, I, I really get triggered emotionally. I, I start losing my temper. Have you, you know, where is the spray? Stand so many kilometers away. Um, why are you doing that? And literally each time a delivery comes to the door, I'm behaving like a mad woman. And I'm saying, I need to be more emotionally intelligent than this, Mary. It's just a delivery. You had one before, you had one last week. I am starting to be so self-aware now. And when there's a delivery, maybe keep away because I'm aggravating myself and I'm aggravating everybody else. And, you know, finally, I mean, in the, in the, in the um, webinar that we had with Derek, uh, the second one, Enhancing Wellbeing, uh, Derek focused on psychological health, the different tools, tips, and techniques which appeal and work differently from us all. And we'll be repeating this series, it was so popular. But for those of you who were there, this will build on uh, what was then built on by Derek Bander, who's, faci who's uh, facilitating us tonight, today, this morning, so that we can have an uplift of your productivity. So before I come to that, um, I wanna talk about this study that was uh, done in 2019. Um, and, you know, bef be to look at um, what people's views were about working from home. Until this uh, coronavirus pandemic, only about 5% of us worked from home full time. But now what is interesting is that leading to this current pandemic, an overwhelming number of us who undertook this recent study by BAFA, which is an online brand agency, reported that 99% of the people would actually be attracted to working from home. So to put it simply, very few of us, you know, that's what we said we wanted to do. But actually, when you look at the actual facts of the matter, now that we are actually working from home, we are finding that simply very few of us are equipped to manage the myriad of challenges that have been presented to us by this rapidly shifting workspace situation. We're moving from a very well-equipped uh, office space to our own homes, which are not equipped for us to be working from home. So we've been thrown into a new environment virtually overnight with very little preparations. So we have IT teams, and I, I heard one of the chats, Derek, somebody was from an IT. They're scrambling mm -hmm. to set up connectivity and functionality on what people need. Internet companies are struggling to cope with bandwidth. I have two internet companies. I recently bought a small little um, Safaricom uh, modem. And I'm still struggling. I hope I don't drop out on this webinar, but you know, people are struggling because everybody's using this facility. Zoom is overwhelmed and we had a bit of a catastrophe on our first one because of uh, all over the world, people are hacking into Zoom. So there are all these issues. Managers are struggling to measure productivity and deadlines, hold meetings, track projects. They're feeling the employees have got, how do I manage all these many, many people? And individuals themselves are, are, are struggling to buy laptops. There's a shortage. I'm on a boat somewhere where we're trying to buy 50 laptops. You can't get them. And, you know, set up home internet and calling all these companies. So we, literally 99% of us said would love to work from home, but actually we were not um, ready to be working from home uh, at all. And that's what the, um, the evidence is, is, is finding. So perhaps... Um, just maybe um, looking at um, why there's such a shift. Maybe we could just have a few people chatting and, and texting what are the challenges they are finding uh, working from home is presenting. Uh, that would be interesting to hear um, as you send those chats because working from home is challenging because you don't have the luxury of your modern office. Um, you know, working from home, you're finding now there's noise, there's deliveries. For me, it's made Chris 
crossing staff, uh, there's a neighbor upstairs. There was a, I was having a, uh, you know, the time, uh, I'm sorry, my internet is saying it's unstable. Um, by the time we were finishing, her children came home. They wanted to hug mommy. And at the time we were having a chat, I think it was a second webinar, uh, Victoria, uh, Vicky, and somebody, the dogs were barking away. So, and there's lack of conferencing resources enough to, to fit in. So perhaps, Derek, uh, what are some of the chats that are coming through that people are finding uh, personal challenges uh, in, um, in, um, in working from home? Yeah, thank you for that, Mary. Sure thing. So somebody here has asked uh, a question about new world order. This is a trigger phrase for some people associated with a lot of negativity. Is there any particular reason why this term is being used or what it means for you, Mary, this new world order? <laughs> That's one of the questions that has come in. Yes, I think that is one for parking in the garage and perhaps Vicky can tell us whether we'll handle that at one time. There are a lot of issues going on and there's a lot of information, misinformation, perhaps even some correct information. I've also seen uh, videos and yes, that, that could be an interesting topic to chat about one of these days. For today, we want to yep. equip you with tools and uh, tips on how to handle working away from home. But good, question, good point. There's a, a, a couple more questions here. One from Chess. I usually work from my home alone with everyone out at work or in school. So my challenge is having people in my space is challenging. And uh, Amos says, is one of my challenges is that I tend to overwork and I lack the balance between office work and personal time. And then somebody says they have a, a baby who is sick in the house. They have naughty teenagers. So these are some of the challenges <laughs> that people are facing. I, I, no, I, I don't want to say anything to that. Yes. Yeah. I like that one for my greatest challenge is uh, uh, switching between work and life. I feel like I work through, I think that's a very real challenge for me as well. It's like we're putting in work, 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 work. I think yeah, correct, correct. Now those are very valid points, all of them. And it's, it's, it's something that we need to look at. I think what I could say is that all these factors are very important because they create emotional um, uh, responses. And what do I mean by this? Well, when you have emotions, they create, you know, you, th this emotion will create either productive or unproductive emotions for us. So you can have maybe distractions within the Wi-Fi, you know, uh, in, 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 you know, you can have distractions which will really, in your work uh, from home environment, which will cause you to feel uh, disconnected, it may feel, make you to feel annoyed, your inability maybe to reach people when they're working. So there are things that will happen minute by minute that we'll find that working from home is not as we imagined. We'll find that maybe I had access to resources. I'd accept to, I had access to the server to get information. I had access to um, a printer. I had access to something. Internet goes down, I get annoyed. Uh, for example, for me, when I, you know, I started working actually from home eight years ago. And one of the things I realized is that the staff crisscrossed, sweeping here, getting food, taking something to my mother, bringing back, somebody's crossing over. And here I am trying to be oh, professional. Mary's connection oh. might be us. Mary, I think we lost you there briefly. Could you just repeat that point again? Yeah, I was saying I started working uh, from home about eight years ago. And I know that some of the things that were frustration and I had to, to you know, was people crisscrossing in front of me in the house. Some are going to sweep, bringing the laundry, taking the things that have been ironed, taking lunch for my mom. Uh, physio people were coming in. My children are going older once when they're visiting. And all these were distractions and things that I know me because here yeah, I'm trying to be very professional. So what happens is that you have interruption. Maybe you have a neighbor whose dog barks all the time or you have noise, you have kids coming in and, and you're having you know, to, to look at them. So all these issues will bring in negative emotions. You get annoyed, maybe you even get exhilarated when something works well. But we know it's a well-researched science that what we feel minute by minute, hour to hour, day by day, significantly influences three aspects of ourselves. It influences an has a direct link on the quality of our decision-making. 
in how we make decisions. It influences our behavior. What other people experience of us when I'm getting annoyed that people are crisscrossing and people are ringing the bell to bring gazetti and I don't know, milk and whatever else they're doing. Um, so you can imagine you, you, you're annoyed with the kids or you're annoyed at something and then you're going to a video conferencing, literally jumping from that. That negativity and that emotion, you're going to bring into that meeting and that's how people will experience you. And that's how you will show up annoyed. Um, and of course, in how you show up also affects your, um, your productivity. So in this webinar, we, we're about helping you find things within your working from home environment that can create or enhance your productive emotions for you. What is working for you? What is not working for you? What are some of the things you can do that can make a difference and so that you actually become and feel more productive in your workspace? That is what today is about. Um, so again, uh, Derek, are people posting in their thoughts as we yeah. chat about uh, these things? There are people who are posting in a lot of their challenges. Working from home has stopped feeling like a rest place. I feel like I don't switch off from work and home. Getting used to the new normal, which includes homeschooling the children while trying to maintain a focus on work. Somebody's asking, how do we measure productivity? Um, and then somebody just says, power cut. So I think, Mary, what you're saying here is that all of these myriad of challenges, of which some you're going to specifically address is that the beginning is starts with your mind and this self-awareness and recognizing that this is just how your mind is working in terms of its emotions and how it processes and tags these negative emotions whether it's a power cut or whether it's an interruption from a delivery from Jumia the beginning of beginning to work through all of these challenges is about recognizing that you can control how you feel about some of these challenges that everybody is putting through here. Yeah. Sure. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And um, let, let's move on to that. Well, there's this survey that was done um, in 2019 uh, by Buffer, who I talked about the brand agency, and they surveyed 2,479 people. Um, to see what were their top challenges, uh, as you've been, um, you know, mentioning yours and giving them to us on our chat, um, on um, what were the things that they were uh, they were experiencing? Because before coronavirus, as I said, only about five percent of us worked home from uh, full time, and um, so let's see. Well, the first one was unplugging. And I think somebody already <laughs> mentioned that, that, you know, it's full time. Home doesn't feel like home. That was an excellent comment that, um, you know, you're just full, you're on full work mode. Now, the thing is, when you're working from home, work never goes away because you're working from home. You don't say goodbye, shut the office door and you go. The laptop is there. The Internet is there. Nothing ever gets locked away. And it's very tempting to continue to work. Even when you go to another room, you say, oh, let me quickly answer that. So the problem here is that there's no clear separation between work and, work and uh, home. And it's very easy to say, oh, it's okay, I'll do that later. That later is midnight. That later is four in the morning. So, um, and also taking calls at any unusual hours. It becomes now very common. I'm now feeling I can call people. I used to have a limit of calling people uh, I would say 9.30 is the latest, but I typically never call people after 7.30. 8.30 if it's, there's, a, there's an emergency, because I thought it was rude. But now I'm finding myself texting people and saying, are you up? Can we talk? At 10, 10.30, who asked us that we can invade people's space? So that taking at calls at unusual hours, this has become identified as the number one uh, issue uh, in this study. And I'm glad that people already are relating to this. The next one. And not surprisingly, is, um, is loneliness. And um, we know that we are people, we are human beings. We like to connect with others. That's what human beings are. It's about relationships. Relationships are critical. When I'm a leadership trainer, I'm always telling people, leadership is about relationships. It's about influencing people and interacting with people. And relationships are fundamental 
to emotional intelligence. And that's why I became an emotional intelligence coach because you cannot be talking about a le leadership without talking about emotional intelligence, about relationships with people. So now we've been encouraged to do exactly the opposite. We're supposed to stay home, away from people. We are being pushed even further apart. And while virtual, virtual connection is fine, it really does not replace that face-to-face -face connection we have in the office with our people. And particularly even as Africans, we, we are very relational. You say when you're doing business in Africa, it's all about relationships, it's very relationship. So this sudden quick separation from people, the boss is separated, the colleagues are separated, people are feeling lonely and are missing that quick coffee chat by the machine, that quick lunch, checking on you, dropping, how's this thing? Because many problems are solved by that daily operational. And so I'm not surprised that people are missing this and feeling that loneliness. I recall that actually, um, was it UK last year? actually introduced, people say it was a ministry, but I believe it was a department of loneliness. They have so many older people who are lonely at home. And this is one of the prime causes of when you get older that you die because it's fundamental for us to have relationships, particularly as you get older. What's the third they found, challenge they found in this study? The third one was uh, communication. This is always a core competency. Every leadership position, every manager position, if you're ever hiring, you know that communication, communication, communication is number one. Um, so communication is that we are not able to communicate uh, because even if we are, we are talking um, on the phone, it's, it's through a mechanism. I can't read your body language. Um, this Wi-Fi connectivity, poor challenges, too many meetings, sapping our energy, and knowing how to communicate on this new mode, uh, mode, mode you call it a medium, is really a challenge. And how to be present in that communication is a challenge. Next one that the study found, distractions. I'm sure it was mentioned in those challenges about distractions. As I was saying, dogs barking, housework, staff crossing, snacking. Sometimes you just want to go to the fridge, distract yourself. So that's another challenge. And the very last one that this study found was uh, staying motivated. It's amazing that when you're alone, and we know this is true, when you're sitting with colleagues, it's a work atmosphere. Um, you know, there are no people, you know, there are people there to rally you, to keep you, you know, to rally around you, to keep you focused. But when you're alone, and I know for myself, this is true, it's very easy to get distracted, um, to drift and really not achieve what it is that you were supposed to be achieving. You know, you start getting up later and later, you shower every two days. <laughs> not that kind of thing. Let's admit it. Uh, we do that. You all know. Uh, you only dress up to here. I I think my feet haven't seen shoes for three weeks or four weeks now. And particularly in this environment where there's so many distractions, there's social media, there's news feeds that you know, you're know you searching all the time to keep you informed. I'm an expert on CNN, I'm an expert on MSNBC, I'm an expert on, on BBC. So all these things keep us distracted. Let's do something very interesting. Um, Derek, do you, do you want us to do a poll? and sure. look at all of these five things. Um, what is the one biggest challenge uh, that, that you know, uh, our participants feel will be, for the next few weeks or even months, will be their biggest challenge, one out of this. Vicky, are you ready for it? Yeah, I think it's launched on your screens now. Um, okay. Just click on uh, any of the five. So let's do this. Let's see if this technology works, guys. Let's see if we'll be able to see what you think is the most significant challenge to you out of these five. It looks like um, distractions are taking. And is Josephine on the line to also chat to us what her ideas and what is her biggest challenge or her view? Is Josephine uh, Kimai around? Our generous yeah. emotional we, uh, we have Kathy. Okay. Maybe she can share. Kathy, are you there? So right now, distractions seems to be leading. 
that's the biggest uh, challenge that most people are facing. Yeah. Followed by staying motivated and uh, then unplugging and then communication and at a distant fifth is loneliness. So oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They're still very relational, I think. Wow. Attractions is three percent. Next one, stay motivated. Okay, so I think we have the. I can uh, just show the results as they are, because we have about uh, ninety plus eighty-five percent of respondents. So I think if I can end poll now and share. Yeah, the results. So distractions comes up there as uh, the biggest one. 66% of, uh, of uh, the people here think distractions are the, are, the, are the biggest challenge so far. And then 18% think staying motivated or rather say staying motivated is the biggest challenge. And unplugging is the third biggest challenge, which is interesting. Um, this is very interesting. Yeah, because I think from the global survey, unplugging was the most... Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I think uh, we're a very connected, uh, you know, uh, institution. Yeah. We live with many people. We live with our families. I have my mother, I have my children. Yeah. Others have sisters. We have yeah. staff with us who are part of the family. For me, my staff, you know, they've been with me 14 years, 19 years. So they are part of it. But um, distraction, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that, that that has become the number one. So thank you. How do I get this off my screen or you'll do it? Just, uh, you can cancel, just cancel the, 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 the poll. Stop sharing. Oops. Bye bye. Okay. Is it off your screen? Yes, it's off my screen. Um, it's off my screen. So let's talk about. Um, well, the first one uh, on plugging is really um, because I put them in that way, but I'll try and focus more on distracted, which was the most. This, this really, unplugging was a low number. It was a third item. It's really about putting boundaries and making clear uh, where your workspace is. I think it's important to um, create and delineate a workspace for yourself where you can work and where people respect you. I know I've moved my workspace twice. Um, the dining table had become, as I said, I'm working from home. My dining table was my workspace. People would come in, would have meetings, and only if I have guests would it be translated into a dining table and had cabinets around and my papers. Um, but now with this uh, coronavirus, it's not a great space for video, for video uh, conferencing because the windows are right behind me. I love light. So I've had to move, and I've actually had to get an office desk that was somewhere else and actually now put it in a corner in the sitting room. And it, it looks pretty good. But the thing is, is to create uh, a respect and a quiet around there so that um, you have your own space that you can work with and you can communicate to your family what are your working hours, what time should you not be disturbed. Like my friend, I was saying, I had a client and kids come dashing in and hug you and you're there to having a serious discussion and kids are saying, mommy, who is this? We want to talk. So it's important to do that and... Uh, Communicate with, with, with your family, talk to them, explain to, to them, this is um, my space that, I, uh, that I'm able to put in. Log out of social media. Derek did tell us about uh, during his webinar, the very well attended and wonderful series uh, that he had. He told about two apps, the Focus Keeper and the Self Control um, that are very useful. You can also put your phone on airphone mode. And um, so, Create these boundaries to denilate your space for yourself. So that's one, and yeah, flight mode to create that, uh, that uh, boundary around that. Relationships, for us, I think we said that uh, loneliness, very little, it was like 3%. <laughs> yes. So, so I'm really glad this is Africa. And 
and we know what relationships are. So I'm not the matter about the um, leading remotely. They have this happy hour with colleagues over, you know, over this. We're seeing families getting together. So quite important building and understanding that we are people who are self-aware and we need to be present with our emotion. We need to be connected with others. So if we understand that and um, we being that self-aware to know as a human being, I need connections with others. Reach out to colleagues whom you have relationships with. I know some talk all the time. If that makes you uncomfortable, reach to them and give them the feedback. Some may be very quiet. There's somebody who's not talking at all. Please make the time to reach out for them because you, they could be that 3% who are feeling lonely and would a way to build a home. The indication, we didn't have much on that. We had only 6% um, of you. Um, again, communication, communication. What we are finding, and I know that we talked about one of our, in one of our webinars, is some organizations are finding themselves being super productive. Because you only talk what you need to talk, and that's it. You don't have all this habariyako, mulikuwa wapi, what happened on the weekend, mara nani yuko wapi. So applying focus to these conversations, removing any distractions, being on your phone when you're talking or reading your email, people can tell you're not present. And I'm so, guilty of that. I'm one of those. So talk clearly the sort of which around audio, and most of the conversation are yeah, some of the conversation on audio because video, we don't have enough bandwidth. People can't read you. So it's important that you pick your words. You listen with intent to understand and only speak, be very specifically so you're not misunderstood. And that's all I'd like to say about communication and um, be, be a listener as well. In coaching, we say active listening. Uh, don't listen so that you can speak. You know how you have friends who are always, they, they say they're listening, but they're actually listening for you to finish so that they can tell you their point really actively listen and this will be useful and as i said vicky they do have this buddy calls with colleague that sometimes it, it's useful to them i haven't had my first party yet I, I intend to have one soon vicky you know i love entertaining so derek you'll be in my <laughs> now let's talk about yeah. the big one 66 percent of you talked about distractions being your biggest challenge let's see if we can help you and help ourselves. And also listen to some of your tips as well. We want you to share with you. We are not the gurus in this. We are purely those who are a little bit ahead of the curve because of our emotional intelligence training. Um, the first thing I would say is use tips for creating boundaries. One, we talked about the workspace, create it. So when you're in that workspace, others respect it. Your family respects it. Everybody respects it. When you're in there, that's your lion's den. That is your area. And you can be able to ring fence that area in a workspace and a time space. That this is the time I'm doing this. Daddy, mommy is working. You cannot come during this time. And then give them their time. Because that will help with the distractions. Also, do a little bit of, of research about you know, the things you can't control. Because there are things maybe you can't control when the kids will, they're awake, it's the morning hours, they all want to greet you. So you can't control that, but can you control by setting a time for yourself? Maybe when they're doing homework, when they're doing home, uh, home tutoring or, or watching something that then you can be able to do what you need to do. The other thing, and I, I, I was a king of, or rather queen of this, is creating lists. I've, I've slipped a little bit. But it's really being intentional to create lists and tasks that you, you need to do. You can say, these are my 10 tasks for today, my five tasks for today, and reward yourself when, when, when you do them. Um, like, for example, what do you want to achieve for this week? Have you actually documented it out and hold yourself accountable? And it, you'll find that it gives you focus, it gives you goals. Um, for a long time, we were told about multitasking. I used to be the queen of multitasking until I ended up in hospital several times. I think research has shown today, multitasking does not work. It exhausts you. You don't finish anything really um, meaningful. Do one task at a time. This thing of having many bars, tabs on your computer and documents open, and you do one, then you forget it, then you start researching something, then you go to LinkedIn, then you're finishing this. 
please. I know I have multi bars on mine and they remain for a week because I know what they're there, but work on one task at a time that will really help you because multitasking is exhausting and research backs this. So um, try and work on that. Identify the boundaries that you can control. I've talked about that. Be intentional of everything that you do. Write down the things that you want to achieve. And the biggest of all, log out of social media. Log out of social media. Cannot be a challenge. 66% of you are distracted. So, uh, log out of social media. Derek, I'll pause for now and see what uh, yourself and, and uh, Kathy, she's there, and Josephine would like to add what comments are coming through. Vicky, you can keep us motivated and keep us chatting. <laughs> Um, I can say uh, we've had one person say they share, they have, um, one company has a 30 minutes every week social call where everyone does, um, I mean, just shares socially what's been going on. I guess um, that's, that's more to do with the, the things people have been doing. And uh, there's also someone else who has said they have virtual drink cups every, ah, that's actually Damaris, yes, Damaris Village. And people look forward to it. Okay, I think those are the main <laughs> comments. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, the last, going to the last one, which was, wait, sorry, Derek, go ahead. No, there were just a few more comments over here. Let me see. Uh, so Hannah talked about a company that's doing a 30 minutes catch up social call every day, which I think is a fantastic idea. Ah. Uh, and they found that most of the people look forward to that. And then Catherine says she's been working from home for about 10 years. She's been able to manage distractions in the sense that she has a working desk and her people know that if she's at that desk, that is work uh, or work hours. And they knock and they wait to come in. I guess it must be a second room. So you're fortunate, not everybody has that. Secondly, they know mm -hmm. that if, they're, if she's in a teleconference, that means no interruptions at all. So I think Mary, that's talking to what you said. You just have to set these boundaries with your family. Maybe if I can add a little bit about that. Not everybody yes. has that, uh, is that fortunate perhaps to have a separate room or maybe you're a single mother and you have all of the kids so you don't have a partner so that you can buddy up with in terms of, okay, I'll work for two hours, then you will keep the kids entertained for two hours and that sort of thing. No matter what your circumstances are, we want to start with first of all, taking control of our emotions. That is going to help us think more creatively and more laterally. But it is incumbent on you to find a system that's gonna work for you, whatever that system is. And some might work better for others, some might work better for other people. <coughs> you simply throw up your hands and say, I, I was a gun. you've got to find a way of, of dealing with this. Mm. And then there was just one other point I wanted to quickly make. Somebody had mentioned that they are not used to working alone. So it's that loneliness, even though that came out at the bottom in our poll. I know an organization that actually does this. So they have their Zoom set up like this, or they have some, some other platform. And what they do is that everybody works, because you know how it is in an office. You can you know, look up and ask Carol, hey, Carol, what was that email address of that guy? Or you say, hey, John, who was I supposed to get in touch with? But if you actually have the people like this call, in front of you virtually, you can do your work and everybody's doing their own thing. And then you just reach up and say, hey, Vicky, what was the name of that person you were supposed to get in touch with? And that sort of thing. So that might also help to kind of mitigate the yeah. um, challenge from working alone and being mm -hmm. alone at home. I like um, that, it's a very yeah. innovative. I see Josephine is there, so we'll give her time. That is really innovative. I think you can do it for a space of time, like every hour or two hours a day. Excellent. Josephine, you were saying something. Yes, I was also saying that we need to understand that not everybody will be able to keep an eight to five work day because of the different challenges that we have, the different issues of children. So I want to believe that as leaders, we will also need to know and connect with this kind of um, uh, employees and make sure that then we log in with them at times that are convenient for them because they've specified. So maybe for somebody, it may be six to seven, 
that is when she can actually get the house quiet and can be productive. So we need to make sure that we actually are able to fit in these kind of, um, of situations. Although, of course, within reason, not at one o'clock in the night or something like that, but there will be changes on uh, people's productivity times. No, yeah, absolutely. And that's why actually we talked about that those boundaries create a workspace boundary and a time space boundaries and learning to be that flexible that, you know, you can't control when your kids will come or when they wake up and you can't say, oh, you know, whatever. They're waking up, they want to see you or they are doing something. So create a time space as well that you carve off for yourself and people then respect that. But it's important to communicate that to your family that during these hours, or sometimes it's day by day, maybe you have uh, phone calls tomorrow that will come at this time. I will not want to be disturbed. I create that time so that I can take the phone. Actually, my, my, my office space is actually one corner in the sitting room. So Derek, I'm one of those as well. It's in one corner. And it actually looks quite pretty with the furniture and everything. It's kind of blended. I've put a, a table lamp on it and a few books. You know, you kind of don't really think of it and see it. So. So that's it. So let's go to the last one, uh, motivated, which I believe there was not, um, motivation, staying motivated, 18% of you, and that was the second one. And I guess this is what Josephine is saying, and uh, Derek has read out, and Vicky mentioned, build a routine around you. Whether that routine, as she said, is between six and seven, but it's important to have a routine. Um, because we know that as human beings, we're creatures of habit. Go, why we work well is we go to the office at a certain time. We all work at a certain time. We break at a certain time. That routine, and if you read most of the successful people, you know there's this book called About 10,000 Hours. You get excellent at doing something. You get to be an expert at doing something when you've done it. I mean, the logic was 10,000 hours, and you really get to be a master of something by doing it repeatedly and repeatedly and getting better and more excellent. Mm -hmm. Building a routine does that. We've been thrown out of our normal routine. So how do we get back to some routine? I know I'm a night owl. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely um, nocturnal. Um, I'm hopeless in the mornings unless I have something that needs to wake me up. So I have my routines of typically where, when I would work and I know I flourish, but retain that uh, routine as much as you can. Take breaks. Uh, I'm not very good at this, I must admit. I can sit for a long time and that's not really allowed. Get your blood circulation running. Uh, try and really do take breaks and walk around. It's important because it, it will create a, a, an emotional relief for yourself and you will feel good about it and not feel exhausted. Um, focus on your workspace. That's where you are. Create it, manage it, be there and uh, build activity into your day. Again, one that I'm not very good at. I wonder what texts you're getting about ways people uh, say they have to keep themselves motivated. I can sometimes sit here and I know it's terrible for about four or five hours. And when I get up, I'm almost creaking these old bones as they lift out of the chair, creaking. <laughs> but I'm trying many times to, you know, it's a long, my, my house is actually a long house, it's a flat. And it's long. So I'm starting to walk up and down, walk and bar, and people find me doing all kinds of flexi exercises. This is not the time to go buy machines. They're very bad for your knees, particularly at our age. Um, and I certainly don't want to push you for records for indoor <laughs> pieces of training equipment, but find something. I've seen some very entertaining things on YouTube on doing exercises, even with the children, maybe dance. So perhaps I'll give it a minute or two, Derek or uh, Vicky, and see what's coming through the chat in terms of... Uh, is Kathy still there? I'd love to add yeah. Kathy's opinion. I, I, just something I wanted to share, and I saw this on a YouTube video. It was very funny, but uh, very interesting. Is even as you build your routine, um, look at the distractions that are coming through. Sometimes it might mean you're not giving them enough time. So if your children are coming into your space a lot of the times, perhaps you're not giving them the time they deserve. You could be there, but you're not giving them their time. So as you develop your routine, also look at the things that, that are, are, are getting in your way. So assigning time for children, time for children, not time for children and a phone is one. Assigning your own time for social media to get your social media um, hook up, see what's happening is also a good thing. So that, that addresses those things that you're saying are distractions, that we are saying are distractions and then gets to manage them a bit better. 
Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I think, let me, some of the comments are coming through. One person said, in our family, we post meetings in the family group, which is interesting, and we remind each other of when they're going to, to start. Um, Derek, there's a long one from Nat Natalie Matenge. If you could read that one out. I seem to have lost so Nat it. Natalie says, uh, as I believe as leaders, we must remember uh, that there are different circumstances for all. You may have people who cannot work from home and need to go into work. So do not forget to connect with them too. I think she's talking about leaders. Don't forget to connect with your teams. She knows of a manager who takes a day once a week to actually go into the office so that any staff who are working from the office feel supported and have someone they can connect with face to face. And um, she says, as managers, it's very easy to disconnect from those whose circumstances are different from ours. So that's a great comment, Natalie. If I can just yeah. add to that again, just quickly, and Mary, maybe you mentioned this uh, um, as you come to the end of your talk, that we also mustn't be too hard on ourselves. We need to be, the self-care starts with being self-compassionate amongst ourselves, giving ourselves a break, letting us know that this is not easy, that we are human beings and to err is human. And once we can forgive ourselves, then it is probably easier to forgive or to feel compassion or empathy for the other person. Absolutely agree. And this dovetails so much on my last point, being a positive influence on others. You get a very good buzz helping others going out of your way, first on yourself, because it's all this unrealistic. I call it the, the Kronos. You know, there's the Kronos and Kairos. Kronos comes with a Greek god from the father of time, where you say, I must do this by this time, must be married by this time, 40, I must retire, I must have a house in Runda, da, 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 da. And then you don't achieve those things, and you're the same one who put those timelines on yourself because society or somebody told you, instead of thinking about Kairos, the god of opportunity, too, and I'm still reading engineering about a whole new career. You know, so is it uh, the Kentucky or Kentucky Fried Chicken became a millionaire at 68, ex-president at 80. So dancing to your own tune at your time instead of having these fixations of what you need to do. And I remember Zuhura picking on this on our very first webinar where we were actually talking about keeping your head above water. It was a panel of all of our speakers, including me, Derek, and um, Vicky. And Zura said, and it's so true, you get a buzz when you go outside of yourself to help others. It can be a very small way. When people send you a text, I had one this morning, somebody just texting me and saying, just checking if you're all right. How are you doing? I need to send more of those. But it, it really does encourage you and you feel good. And it helps you to go out of yourself and worry about this situation and think about others. So helping others in as much as you can in whatever way, whether it's food, whether it's donating, whether it's calling up people, whether it's looking after your staff who are with you, they have needs, they are having issues. That's a very good way. And that, that buzz helps you emotionally when you get good um, positive emotions that help you become even more productivity. So to summarize, as I'm coming to the end of this webinar, uh, Genos webinar, and thank you so much, Genos, for making it possible for us and for me to talk to so many people, I'm really pleased to see the numbers that have turned out, is really step one, pause, check in with yourself, which Derek has just talked about, and identify with the way you're feeling. Identify the triggers of pleasant and unpleasant emotion. This is the issue of being self-aware so that you're in a productive state and managing those emotions. Actively seek and pursue activities that generate positive emotions for you. So that, I would say, would be a very first step on evaluating are the working from home strategies working? Then step number two, experiment. Yeah, my desk used to be on the dining table, is now here. I used to try and wake up at seven to be at the desk at Eight. I can't do that. I'm a lazy one. I want to stay in bed, but I work until 10, 11 at night. That's when it's quiet and I can really take a lot of work out. So experiment with different ways of 
working, you identify for yourself which working from home activities work for you. No one of us is the same. We are all very different, different homes, different challenges, children, not children, small ones. I was speaking to somebody who had twins, uh, twin girls at seven and then a three-year-old. How, how, how do you expect them to be, to be working to my schedule who has no children? They're all adults, uh, young adults at the moment. So identify, get a goal and identify. If, um, and then number three, please, this is about emotional intelligence, practice being present. in every time and then search for opportunities to cultivate focus and again Derek is very wise I told you he's been a genius <laughs> emotional intelligent coach for a long time accept that loss of focus is part of this process and forgive okay. yourself you're yeah. quite okay you have tomorrow is another day and you will wake up and you will leave it again, and life will continue. The, the, the sky will not fall down, the little red hen where the sky is falling down. Guys, the sky is not falling down. It's just a new way of working. It's gonna be tough. It affects many of us, others worse than others, but we are all in this together. And this is the idea of having this free webinars to use our calling, our talents, and share with all of you, and for you to share back in what you're getting out of this. So lastly, I won't take a poll, but what I would ask you, please, is can you text us, each one of them, each one of you, take two minutes to set an intention of how you will manage your own WFH, working from home environment. Because the idea is, is to finish here with an action plan. I'm a coach, Derek is a coach, um, Josephine is a coach, Vicky is a coach, Many others here tonight, we are seeing all these names are coaches. And the idea is, what is a call to action? There must be something we're going to do. We're not here just to, you know, have, just here for what? We want to improve ourselves and each other. So what's your action plan? Set an intention that you will do, that you manage. Which area? Or many of you were on this distraction. And um, feel free to share it or not share it. So Mary, we've gotten quite a few comments in the chat box. I think everybody has access to these. I can't read all of them, but people are definitely sharing some really great tips. So again, everyone just go to the chat box. Um, things that working for separate people, depending on the environment or where they are. So a lot of great, great comments from, from a lot of people. There's one I like there, um, the fitness buzzer. Mm -hmm. Every 90 minutes you get up and walk around for five minutes. <laughs> I think that's, a good that's, that's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, then we have everything from... So I hope you have all of you who have very kindly joined us today for this Genos International Webinar. Um, set yourself your own action plan. I know mine, hate to admit, but it's true, is the activity. I really do need to get up and do activity. And I keep saying I'm gonna do my stairs um you know outside but then again i'm afraid because that's where the delivery people come but i need to look for a way even around here to really do activity because i know that's my achilles heels doing activity and yet i know i need it at my age and weight i i need it so to round off um let's talk about really enhancing uh, your productivity when you're from home so please intentionally engage in activities that make you feel positive and support your productivity. Start to identify those triggers, the things that put you off in a ruka kidogo. And you know very well from an emotional intelligence point when you have an unproductive emotion, you don't make productive uh, decisions and everything else then follows. Experiment with different ways of working. Self-awareness, be present here, me, focus. What Vicky was saying about the children, they know when you're starting to look on the thing and they tag you, mommy, daddy, they keep tagging you because they can tell you're not present. Or if you're having this conference call and you're trying to, you're in a meeting and answering an email, they can tell. Um, you think you can tell when people are distracted, but you think they can tell when you, we're all the same. So we can tell when people are not present. And that's part of self-awareness. And finally, accept some approaches will work and others will not. It's a learning thing. We are all together 
uh, learning about this new way that we could never have thought three months ago we're here. It's been my pleasure to talk with you and share um, this useful part. My contacts are there. I'll hand you over to Derek and the rest of the team. Can I ask that you go back to the slide before? Because I just want to make a comment on um, it's actually a lot of development of self awareness because one side doesn't fit all. And as you're so rightly uh, pointing out, understanding uh, very intrinsically for you what works and is, 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 I think, the most important part of of starting to be productive when you're working from home. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we can move on. Very. Spoken a true teacher. I love it. And that's why I love this work that I do. It's, it's so true. Yes, Derek. Uh, no, I was just going to say thank you very much. The thanks are coming in. They're literally flooding in. People are really inspired. They found the session insightful. They've learned a lot. So kudos to you, that was brilliant. You have um, been excellent with explaining in a very easy to understand manner some of these concepts and really set people along the path to uh, working a little bit smarter from home and particularly in this challenging environment that we have found ourselves, we all found ourselves in. So thank you very much. I just want to remind everybody that we are going to have a reprise of these sessions uh, beginning this Thursday. The three sessions that we're particularly focusing on are managing your psychological well-being. The session that we had today, which is um, tips and techniques and how to manage working remotely. And then we're going to have a session on particularly leadership and leading your teams remotely. We will send you a complete list of times when these will be. But at this point, I want to thank um, all of the people who made this possible, particularly Vicky over there at Profiles, Josephine Asante Sana, and everybody else from the team at Profiles International, and of course, our wonderful, wonderful coach and leader, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, have a productive a productive day and a productive week and we will see you soon thank you very much thank you bye everybody